Somebody read that? Tell me. What does that say? What is your mission? What is your mission? What is your mission? That, that, that can mean something different for Omar. It can mean something different for Daniel. It can mean something different for Blake, for Sabrina, for Al, for Laura, for me. That can be something that can mean something different for each one of us. Regardless of who we are, God still gets yes, served. Kind of like, like what do you want to be when you grow up or something like that? It can mean anything. It can mean anything. Right now, this is just a, a basic question. What is your mission? Why were you even why are you even born? Why why did God create you? To do good. To do good? Father passion? Because we, we talked about passion, we've talked about um, hurt, right? Follow rules. What? Follow rules. Follow Following rules. rules. So yeah. my mission is to graduate, go to UCLA, and meet at Warren That's your mission. Can you repeat that mission? Happy Catter. So your your mission, you said your mission is to graduate high school, go, go to UCLA, and become a nurse. Yes. Okay. Anybody else wants to share their mission? I wanted to go to Fresno State graduate high school. Well, graduate eighth grade, graduate high school, and then graduate from college, and I want to get an A. You want to be a nurse, so you want to go to Fresno State, and that, you want to. That is a big nurse. So aren't nurses supposed to be nurses? No, it, isn't it an initial? We'll talk about nurses in a little bit. <laughs> listen, 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 listen. And I like the engagement. I like the engagement, but I want to stay true to what this is. Tonight, I want to talk to you about what is your mission. Because God created you very unique. Omar is very much different from Priscilla, but they're brothers and sisters. Ew, he looks like a clown. You get that? So let, let's try to keep the comments a little lower tonight. But, right, Jeremiah, Noah? You're brothers, right? But you guys are very different. What's your favorite food? Pizza. Pizza? What's your favorite food? You don't have one? <laughs> for me, for me, it's funny. Brianna and I are very different. But, but hey, Brianna and I are very different. But the Bible says that we're one. When we got married, we're one. And we're very different, but at the same time, we're very one. There's a lot of times where we're driving, I'm hungry, and I'm thinking, like, it's Chinese food. Yeah. Right? Nah. Chinese food is like my go to like food. And Brianna's like, hey, do you want to go eat Chinese food? And I'm like, Lord, thank you. <laughs> Like, I don't, a lot of people talk about, like, the issue of, like, you, uh, trying to figure out where you're going to eat with your wife or your girlfriend is always a struggle. For us, it's not. Why? Because we're one. Usually what, what she wants, I want. And what I want, she wants. We become one. And so, what is your mission? I'm talking about your mission. When we become one with God, we start to discover our mission. Like when we start becoming one with God, when God starts bringing us closer to him, when God starts developing us and starts showing us who he is and, and he starts touching and talking to us and showing us through scripture who, who we are and how, how much he loves us and how much he's empowered us through the Holy Spirit, he starts revealing our mission. So in John verse 17, 21, it says, I pray that they all be one, just as you and I are one, as you are in me. Father and I, I am in you. And may they be in us so that the world will believe you sent me. John 17, 21. I read it again. It says, I pray that they will all be one. This is Jesus talking. Just as you are one, as you are in me. Father and I, I am in you. And many and may they be in us so that the world will believe you sent me. John 17, 21. So Jesus is saying, just like the Father and I are one, I desire for you to be one with him. So people can know what? So people can what? Know that you are what? One with God. So it's so important to understand that God, God is not just a, a, a makeup or a, a, a something up in the air that we think is like untouchable or a make-believe character that we just made up. God is so real. 
God is so real in everything. And like he's waiting for us to wake up. He's watching over us when we go to bed. He's desiring a relationship with us. He desires to, to know you and for you to know him, to, for you to be one with him. And so, so God is saying, Christ is saying, as me and you, Father, are one, I desire for them to be one with you as well. So people, what? So other people can understand what? That you're one with God. So the Bible also talks about that they will know us by the way we love each other. Who are they? Who do you guys think the Bible is talking about when they said, when he, when John and Jesus, they're talking about they? Who do you guys think that Jesus is saying they? Who is they? Us. Us? He's saying, but right here he's saying, if you, right, are one with him, then they will understand, they will know that you're one with God. Who are you, who are you around at school? People. People. You walk tomorrow morning. You walk on your campus. There's people that don't know who God is. There's people that are, are dying right now inside that are struggling that no one knows. Like Brianette, we prayed for a, a young man and his mom just passed away. At school. At school? Like you know, he, she, it's a student of hers. He, her mom, his mom just passed away randomly. And, and he's carrying this hurt. He's carrying this pain. Brad meeting with him and talking to him. And, and, and but he goes to class. He walks in the campus. He has a backpack. He has new shoes. He has clothing. He looks just like any other regular kid. But inside, he's broken. But Jesus is saying. Jesus is saying that if you're one with him, then people will recognize that you belong to God. And if you belong to God, that means God, people will see that the love of God lives in you. The power of God lives in you. And so when, when the power of God lives in you, when you come around people that are, are broken and dying, guess what happens? You bring light to them. What is your mission? Regardless of what age you may be, you're on mission. Like my daughter, first thing, we've been teaching her who the Son of God is. Taya, who is the Son of God? Jesus. She's three. And so we told her, come tell your Sunday school teacher who the Son of God is. Because I want her to know and teach others, even though she's two or three. She's able to know who God is. The Son of God is Jesus. And so, and she's learned this on her own. Like God has come into our home and through, through, through movies and different things, God has showed her like who he is. And but so she and her at two years old, she's on mission. We, we've told her, we've empowered her to go. Go baby, go. You, take care of wherever you're at, go. Be a light, be a light. So people can see that that you you are different. Each one of you are very different. You're not alike. You're not like everyone else. You're, God has called you. God has anointed you. God has blessed you and empowered you to change this world. And through and so we're on mission. And mission may look like different for everybody else. For me, when I'm coaching ball, I coach. I teach basketball. I, I run plays, I run exercises, but the core of my mission, of core of everything that I do, I try to show the kingdom of God to everyone that I'm coaching. My coaches that come to my house, when we have meetings and we, when we eat, I, we pray, I ask them, hey, what do you need prayer for? And in the beginning it was awkward because they, not everybody's like Christian, right? Not everybody's like, uh, they don't really believe in God, some of them. They don't do it normally on a regular basis. They don't talk to God the way I talk to God. They know they probably believe in God, but they don't talk to God. So I, I, I but that doesn't change me, right? 
that's what I've learned through my through my 31 years old of, of, of life. I've learned that it doesn't change me. Even though somebody may not believe in God, in the power of God, it doesn't change who I am, how I'm going to respond to, to other people. Right? Because it's easy to say, well, you don't believe in I'm not going to, I'm just going to be cool and not share anything that I have to share. But for me, it's more than just sharing with words. It's sharing with action. Right? So one of my coaches, they're struggling, maybe with their marriage, right? Relationship with their kids. I get to show them through, through my life and through my marriage how God has changed our marriage, how, how God has touched my, my, my marriage and my children and, and how we're, we're working on it. We're not perfect. I'm not perfect. I'm not saying that. But God has, has used me to show others that there is a perfect God that has, has our back. So when we, when we share the, 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 the principles of the kingdom or the love of God with people, we're accomplishing something significant which will last for eternity. Do you guys know what eternity is? What is it? It's not like cinema. Forever. 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 Right? Forever. So eternity is what? Forever. Is there an ending? There's not an ending. And so when you get to show, when you preach the gospel to somebody, when you share the love of God with somebody, and you share Christ with them, it's not enough just to be good. Right? It's not enough just to say I'm a good person. It's about showing Jesus to someone. See, Brandon now has an opportunity as she sits with the student to share Christ with them. Because he can go to counseling, he can go, he can go to rehab, he can go to so many different things, bad or good. But the only thing that's going to hold them together is Jesus. Regardless of what how old you are, like Jesus is all we need. And so I share this with you because a lot of times when we're hurting, when we're hurting, we try to depend on things that don't have any value. And we've talked about value, we talked about what power, right, and hurt. And if we don't process hurt, we don't process pain, that pain will, will stay there. And it keeps us away from what? Our purpose. Our what? Our mission. See, the, the, the enemy is very, very conniving. He understands. If you hurt, if you come to church every day, and you can be hurt, and no one will know it. But if you're not on mission, you're not doing what God called you to do. And he understands. You can be at church, and you can just sit there, and you can, you can just... Wait for something to happen. But if you're not on mission, he, he has you where he wants you. He understands. So even as, as an athlete, when you go out and we say for wrestling, right? You wrestle, you train every day, you work out every day. It's for what? What's the final result? To win. To have a match. But you train with your brothers. You train with your teammates. You train hard. You, you watch your diet. You, you run, you, you do exercises that probably don't feel good. But at the end of the night, when you're on that mat and you win, you eventually, as a team, have what? Accomplished what? Your mission. And so for us as believers, it's the same thing. My job, if, I, if I'm not hurting at the time, is to encourage my brothers and sisters and say, hey, we're still on mission. We're doing this together. It's not about me. I can't go out into these apartments and touch everybody that's there, that's hurting, that's broken. I need you guys to be able to do the same thing, to be the heads and feet of Christ. I can't do it by myself. I can't go to the high schools and, and, and I'm, I'm one person by myself. I have the access to go to any high school and any, if, that I want to right now. But my job is to train people like yourselves to go out and go in places that I normally can't go to. There's friends that you know that I don't know the way you know them. Right? 
There's friends that Omar has that I don't know that he knows. There's people at, at, at Laura's job that you know that I have no access to. But it doesn't change my mindset and where I need to be. Our mindset always should be on the mission, and that mission is to share the, God, the, the love of God with people, the kingdom. Because without Jesus, people, where are they going to be in eternity? Somewhere where it's not pretty. See, Jesus gives us to an eternity with, with him, with the Father. When we accept Jesus in our lives and our heart, he gives us the, the access to eternity with the Father. Everlasting hope, everlasting peace, everlasting. So everlasting means what? There has no what? End. And so imagine a world that, that has peace never ending, that has joy never ending, that has love never ending. It would be what? Amazing, right? If there was no sickness, if there was no brokenness, if people didn't have to suffer pain, It'd be awesome, right? And so Jesus has given us access to that world. Like he, he's giving you access today. Like it doesn't, it doesn't happen when you die. Right? It's like today. Like right now, as you go home, you have access, for, uh, access to that. And you can show the love of God by laying hands on someone and saying, I'm going to pray for you. And see, see, God have enough faith that God is going to, to transform that person. Or just being a year for somebody to talk to. Not say anything. Like, not, not give no advice, just talk to them. And just hear them. Like, when's the last time we've shared the love of God with someone? Remember, it, it, it's not enough just to be good. Like, I can be a good person, but it doesn't make me it doesn't give me access to heaven. It doesn't give me access to heaven. And so in John 17, 21, he says, I pray that they will all be one, just as you and I are one. As you are in me, Father, I am in you. And many, and may they be in us so that the world will believe you sent me. He's, Jesus is saying, I am one with the Father. And his prayer is that we become one with him, so we become one with the Father and the Son. And so, mission. Can you? There's a video that I want to share. You know how to work that? I'll just go. I'll do it. I want to show you guys something. Check this video out. This man, he's on mission. He saw that there need, there's a need of something, and he got on mission. Thank you. 